Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, how to use the Effects tab in Adobe Media Encoder. All right, sometimes when you're outputting a video, you would like to add something, like maybe a color lookup table to change the color a little bit. Maybe you want to add an overlay, a bug in the corner, the time code or the file name burnt into the file. And, and this is rarely ever done for final output. You're doing this to hand this off to someone to help them understand something. Maybe you're sending this off to a visual effects artist or for dailies and you're just getting approval. Very easy to do, sometimes missed, let's have a look. So here we are in Media Encoder. I have a project over here. I have a clip over here. Now, in presets, I could create a preset, but it doesn't give me a preview of what I'm doing. That's why I'm choosing to change a preset by dropping in a clip and then clicking on one of these two on the left-hand side. This gives me a visual cue of what it's going to look like. So on the right-hand side, we normally are in our video or audio settings, but on the left-hand side, there is an effects panel. And this effects panel has different uh, components. The first one is to apply a Lumetri look or a LUT. What's the difference? Lumetri looks come from SpeedGrade. They're used by SpeedGrade, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop. They can contain not only color information, but things like vignettes and masks. A LUT is short for look up table. You can be handed a LUT from many different programs out there, coloring programs that can support it. They give you a LUT, you use it in here, you don't even know how, what it, where it came from. You just choose it and output it. Now we give you a few um, Lumetri looks by default and they're everything from a bleach bypass to a black and white filter to some sepia tones and then some dreamy stuff. I'm gonna choose this 70s look and I can turn that on and off and apply that. I can close this up now just to make some more room. I can drop in an image overlay if I wanted. Uh, right now it's set to none and when I choose a particular file, I'm gonna grab a Photoshop file that I have and you can see that this is a native layered Photoshop file with transparency and it just shows up. The opacity is set to 100%. Let's just take that down to, let's say 50%. And I could resize that very easily, but I'm gonna leave that right in the front so you can see that. You can also change the position and other uh, components. The name overlay, you can set the name of the uh, source file. Uh, you can also set the name of the output file. So if I'm outputting this name up here, whatever I choose to change it, it will show up over here. And I can also do things like change the opacity. So I could take that up to 98% uh, if I wanted to. I could also change the position, top, left, center, what have you, bottom. And let's go back to top center. And we can also change it to the source file, source file without the extension, prefix and suffix only, output name without extension. Uh, all right, let's close that up and go to time code overlay. Here we can actually add the time code from the media clip or we can generate completely new time code that even starts at a different value. So if we wanted to start this at one hour, we could. It's important to note that this media file setting here, you might think that if you have a sequence that has a bunch of clips, this will use the time code from the clips. It doesn't, it uses the time code from the sequence or the timeline. So just be wary of that. All right, so once you have all of these things set up and you feel that you might use them again, you can click up in here and save this as a preset. So I'll call this my effects setting and you can also be saving the publish settings too see i've got the effects settings inside here now when i go back and click on here and go to my presets there's my effect settings done already all right so remember one last thing is I could have this applied to multiple clips because remember, Media Encoder can output many different files. So I can choose 100 files, one preset that includes all these effects baked into every single file. That's an enormous time savings. This can be clips, 
After Effects uh, comps and Premiere Pro sequences. All right. Well, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please take a moment and click on the subscribe button for video reveal. And if you're not already using Adobe Creative Cloud, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.